So it's Daniel Harris and Tammy Lee Meyer, and we're just following up on solidifying our, uh, our process for the Global Challenges Foundation proposal. Mm -hmm. uh, I had the awesome uh, luck last week of having uh, Rick and Patel uh, reach out to the Aves community here in Vancouver. Uh, he's moved here with his executive and his executive assistant has also moved here. They put out a call to have a dinner. It's going to be, it's not going to be huge. It's in a restaurant. I think it's a couple dozen people. Wow. Uh, so I'll have an opportunity to, to connect and just, and just see what's happening. Great stuff. Very timely. Amazing. In fact, yeah. right. Yeah. So, there's, we've got we've got our two ideas that work very well together. Um, yours in terms of connecting APIs so that people can mm. collaborate towards democracy projects. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, really, that could be anything, right? So democracy, oh, sure. yeah. democracy projects is a great way to start to be able to leverage yeah. what people are doing um, in terms of advocacy. Mm -hmm. uh, but Connecting APIs is, I think, a really powerful way to model and demonstrate and do collaboration. So sure. I'm oh, not it is. excited about that, but I don't know how to explain it. Exactly. Okay. So, well, yeah. First, I, should, I guess I should say that the, the reason why we can do this uh, for democracy is because we're actually being funded by the EU to do it for a different sector. It's actually the media sector. So. I've got an organization that is that has a grant from the EU for the next three years to do exactly this with copyright and um, uh, and you know inter interactivity between uh, artists and uh, yeah users as well. So we're going to be building it. We've got the budget to build it, and that's why there's an opportunity here to to build um, effectively. Uh, a user-centric computing system that will facilitate uh, a, an individual being able to manage multiple services from one interface. So in effect, what you have right now is you have a browser that's able to log into, you know, different, different tabs of your browser, be it Chrome or Safari or whatever, can log into, you can have logins, you can, have, you can be logged in to uh, multiple different sites uh, in one time. But actually how you um, interact with the sites is individually throughout, through each one of those pages. So you, you post a message on Facebook by being on the Facebook page and you post a message to Twitter by being on the Twitter page and you post a message to LinkedIn by being on the LinkedIn page. So it's very, you know, like brand app centric and, and even more so in, in, you know, in, in the, the mobile space where you've got apps that for each individual <laughs> website, I mean, it's gone a bit crazy really. But interestingly enough, back in the day, a bit of historical stuff here, there was some, there were some tools that started to aggregate both that, that pushing out that kind of searching so you could search multiple sites at the same time and the information coming back so what we actually want to do with an app is is integrate into all of these different websites depending on which sector like like i say we're doing it in the music sector in this in this eu project and then with within the project that we're, we're talking about we're, we're um putting integrating into democracy services and so the idea is that the user will be able to interact with those services from one interface. And that means that they could, for example, have an opinion about a subject and post it to each one of those services with the click of a button without having to, is this making sense? It is, but I've got some questions. Yeah. Well, uh, okay. Carry on. You carry uh, on. Just, just a small part. So you can, you can push out. At, with the click of a button and the results coming back, you can interrogate each one of those sites. And rather than you having 10 different graphs that you have to look at, where the sites are talking about similar information. So for example, what's happened to the, uh, what's, what's the opinion 
what's what's what is other people's opinion to the stuff you're interested in you can mash that together within an app and that's the kind of app so the app that we want to create is both about pushing stuff out easily to multiple services and bringing it back from multiple services and then visualizing it in 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 one kind of in one kind of aspect questions yes uh so my first one is facebook is that an app well it is on your device in, in actual fact facebook is a service that presents its data as an app or and it presents its data its interaction as a website i mean these are just different interfaces you yes. know and it also has an api that you can build an app that connects into facebook not using facebook's website or facebook's um apps so you can actually connect into um you can build an app your own app that connects into facebook and does and looks completely different but still is able to post to facebook and search and get results from facebook and get visualized and visualize stuff on facebook so it's quite interesting so that's yeah that's what we want to do and what's the difference <clears throat> what's the difference between an app and an api well uh, an, an app is something that you run generally locally on your device or your laptop or your desktop computer that's it's an application and it runs locally it's the code you've downloaded the code and it runs locally that's generally what an app is um there, there is there there are kind of like um there's gray areas but that's generally what's ha what's happening generally back in the day websites ran on servers and you got sent a kind of a what, html which was a kind of representation that the server spat out to you. Nowadays, it's much more confusing in, in that sometimes the code runs on the server, sometimes the, the code actually runs in your browser locally. JavaScript, for example, does it runs locally. And so we've now got websites that are now more app-like because they're running locally. But essentially, um, even if you've got hybrid, then you're reliant on a... Um, on a server to to be part of that equation in in a browser for instance but what we're interested in is a standalone app that can run offline even because the offline we we have to we have to be able to facilitate having dodgy connections or you know we it's got to run when there's no connection so you've got to be able to interact with it when there's no connection and then when you switch it back on then you it really stinks up with all the services so that's quite exciting as well how to build a a, a, a system like that um and so yeah the, the question was around what oh, an app to an api so an, an api is what a server or a service will have an api an application programmable interface and um that is uh facilitates other services be they apps or other servers connecting in so you know it, it basically it's a, it's a pipe way it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a gateway into that service that's 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 not human uh human based it's machine based so like that's why it's a programmable interface it's 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 um it's for it's for applications it's for it's not for a human to view the api the, the api isn't ever viewable uh to a human it or and it, if it is it's, it doesn't really make much sense you know it's very it doesn't it doesn't present itself in a nice graphical way but it's the so what it what happens is an application will interface between the human and the and any apis out there so what we want to build is an application connects into multiple APIs and then manages that, that um, interactivity for you. So it's managing data and it's a machine language that allows machines to be able to talk to each other and present their information in real time. Yeah, so an API is specific to each service so each service creates their own api their own uh way of working because every service has their own functionality their own data structures 
There are some commonalities that in terms of how these are expressed, i.e. we're speaking English, but we, 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 you know, we can talk about anything we want. So this is the same way in a sense. It's, it's all, there, there's, they're all st the, the stack of electronic inter interchange is there's a stack of um, kind of standards. And at some point, and you know, in order to start connecting, you have to start using this, these standardized ways. But then at some point you stop using the standardized ways and just have a bespoke conversation about a particular subject. And so for example, the Facebook API doesn't work with Twitter in the sense of if I start talking to Twitter using the Facebook API language, then it won't work. So these are specific, in a sense, formats and languages for each one of these different services. And our ultimate goal is to create open protocols. So and an open protocol is something that's a common language to all services within a particular sector. So, um, for example, I mean, the best open protocol we have out there is um, the internet. It's, it's TCP IP is the protocol of the internet. And that's how all our machines are able to talk to each other in a, st in a standardized way. Um, email is an open protocol. Um, MIDI, you know, if you're connecting musical instruments together is an open protocol. And so this is where we want to get to, but it's very difficult to retrofit an open protocol onto an, an already existing sector. So you have to play um, a different game, which is let's talk to all of them in their own languages, and then let's that then then we can just we can start to see both in a machine way and a human way how that will play out. And it, so this is it's really a journey into harmonization. There you go. So yeah, harmonization, interoperability. These are ways yeah. that we can we can. Uh, build our capacity as movements and use data to, I'm, I'm just trying to. Yeah. Why, why are we doing this? Yeah. You know, what yeah. is it going to give us? What is it going to give us? Well, there's, there's lots of things actually. It reduces our costs massively. It reduces service provider costs massively. Um, we can all start creating tools that we can all use on each other's services. Um, and I'm not talking, even talking about like the, the hippie stuff yet. I'm talking just about, you know, basic service provider stuff that if we, if we start using common languages, common protocols, then, then we can, we don't, we can share the development of, of the, of the systems, you know? And so, so for example, you know, like a really simple one, um, they're, you know, mobile phone providers. At first, they all put, put up their own masts. And then they said, well, hold on a second, why don't we just share that bit? Let's share that, that part of the, our business equation. And then they did that, and then they saved costs. So this is about that. It's not actually taking away their business. It's not an affront to their business. They keep their clients, but it's just um, uh, reducing costs. So that's, that's kind of like a base thing that's to attract um, service providers into this, why it's good for service providers to, to have more harmonization in, in, in and more standardization in what's happening here. Because generally within, within each sector, there's a lot of crossover in the functionality that's expressed with a, with a website or an application, you know, or, or an API. That, that, that's why, you know, that's what the journey is. It's the journey is to discover that, that, um, that crossover, discover where you do, we're all doing the same thing. I mean, sure, there will be, there'll be tweak, there'll be parts of, there'll be unique parts to each service provider. And that's fine. That, that's, that's okay too. But, and, and we'll use that, we'll, we'll allow for that in, in the harmonization process. So, um, okay, so, so how can we then, what's the benefit to us for doing this? Well, in reducing costs, it also reduced barriers to entry into these, into these worlds. So, um, it expands the marketplace or the viewability or the reach of a particular sector. So, so in the music sector, for instance, where I'm also involved, um, it would lower the barrier to entry for service providers to come in and provide new, new and interesting services. So that's one thing. In the democracy sector, which you and I are talking about, then it's going to lower the barrier 
of entry, lower the cost of entry to people providing very interesting services based on expression of ideas, based on visualization of what people are thinking and, and all, all this kind of thing. And then what's the value for individuals? Well, when, in, when individuals can get access to, oh, let, let's, let's, let's go the other route. If I, wanna, if I wanna express my opinion, I have to post something to Facebook, post something to Twitter, post something to Avaz, post something to 350, blah, 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 you know, and it's like, I've got all these different places where I have to post this information. But if, and then if I wanna find out what are people actually thinking, it's, an, it's really difficult to find out what are people thinking. But there's no reason why technology can't provide us with, can't provide solutions to both of these scenarios where I want to push stuff out and I also want to get back opinions. So we don't know exactly how this is going to play out right now, but the first step along the journey is to connect in to all of these service providers because they are the, 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 the websites and the applications that are actually providing services. They are most used by by the general public uh, to express information, express, you know, express opinions. And so the, the first step is to, to integrate with them. And then for a user, it becomes a lot easier to express my, express my opinion because I can push it out, as I said, like with one button. Okay, it might not be exactly with one button, but it's definitely a lot easier than having to log into each website because the app will log into the website or the service for you. So you won't need, you know, so there's a lot of time element to this. There's a lot of, there's a lot of admin around expressing information and then getting information back. You'll all be logged into all of those websites. Anyway, you'll know what your personal opinions are and you'll also be able to get the general opinion that if, if the website or service or application is expressing that is giving you those stats, which I'm sure it will and should do because that's what it's gathering then you'll be able to get those back and then say, well, how does this relate to what I'm feeling? What a, what a, how do my opinions relate to what other people feel? And, and what about people that in my street? What do they think? And what, you know, so ultimately that's kind of where we want to get to is where we can actually connect um, very much more with other people around us. And, and, and at the moment we've come from a very kind of centralized way of working and and really the uh the the journey here is to get to where we we're much more in control of the data we push out the data we bring back the the we're much more in control of um and able to see uh what other people are thinking so in terms of art brock's sovereign accountable commons right there's some, there's a lot of crossover there. And I'm curious about identity because this is gonna, this is gonna be a, uh, an application, an API, an application or an API? So uh, what, what, what I propose doing and what I will, you know, I will, I'll have the technology to do this, as I say, cause I'm already getting funded to do it, but uh, is an application this is a standalone application used by a person, a human being, to connect into multiple services at once within a particular sector. And um, from that, we'll be, able to, we'll be able to expose functionality that is um, available to, to simultaneously to multiple services. As I said, you know, pushing stuff out and bringing stuff back and visualizing uh, date uh, incoming results in in one you know in common graphs in common ways so you can actually see a lot more and ask questions a lot better about the general information coming back to you because yeah. the you'll be in control of the app so you'll be able to um, ask questions like actually literally just like well how does this relate to me and so Obviously, it's, it's going to be up to us to build the application in such a way that gives flexibility to what, how those questions can be expressed. And I'm sure it would be a very pluggable system. Yes. Does that so, answer your question? 
I think so. Identity. But you were talking about identity. I was talking about identity because, mm. because this is one of the fundamental things. We've, we've actually lost our privacy in so many ways. This would be a way to be able to have, to my mind, it's a way for us to be able to have a sovereign kind of accountability to our identity. So it's like the security of this is, is really important because it does plug into all of these services mm. that express our identity in mm. the digital world. Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah, right, right now, they hold the profiles of us. Right yeah. now, all of the service providers hold our profiles and our profiles are on their systems. And technologically, there's no reason why we can't host these ourselves or but you know and i think it's it's gonna it's it's not one way or the other i in in i think we sh shouldn't build just for everything peer-to-peer -peer, and we shouldn't build just for everything um centralized in terms of centralized you know services i think it should be a kind of hybrid between the two and it should be up to each individual person do they want to just be i just want to be on google I just want to be on Microsoft. That's fine by me. Or I want to just own everything myself and I want to be totally in control. And I think we should allow for any depth of paranoia. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's dive in a little bit to how this, your project that you're being funded on so that we can get an example of what this technology will look like in the yeah. music industry and yeah. copyright. Sure. Before I do, I just want to talk a bit more about identity because, yeah. um, that that for me um this is a personal view um identity is a function of trust so it it, it and it and it that comes down to and it's trust of my peers so it's like facebook does a really good job of that kind of mechanism it's your friends you know it's your friends create your 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 trustworthiness in a way and you look at someone's friends to see if they, you know, where's the mutual friendship, you know, and it's, it's, it's not impossible to game that, but it's, it's, it's difficult to game it. And as in, as in, you know, try and con people using that kind of system. So it's quite a, it's quite a good way. So, so I think identity is a function of trust identity. You know, there's a lot, obviously there are established methodologies like passports and all these kind of things at, you know, like, like physical, stuff and government authorized and these kind of things and I, I i think actually identity comes down to a mashup of all of those things so as as so for example daniel i could choose well i trust facebook friendship lists more than i do say for example passports or or identity cards you know and so um it, and that could be my choice. Whereas Tammy, you could say, well, you know, I, I don't really trust Facebook friends because I've been, I've seen, you know, but you know, you, you can choose your own metric of identity of trust. And, and, and so, and I want to get to that point where people are in control of how they deal with other people using these, these, these systems, you know, mm -hmm. um, and they're not, they don't have to do it in a particular way. So we have identity is expressed in thousands of different ways. And therefore, on the when I have to sort of check someone out to see, well, are they bona fide or not? Then, then I could, then I might have a met, a way of establishing that. And it, there are hundreds, thousands of different ways of establishing identity. And so, I could choose a few that I trust more than others. So, does that make sense? Yeah. So I can I see it as a as an identity wallet, in a sense. Yeah. 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 It, 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 it's it's huge. And you can and and you can carry that wallet around, and I can look at it and say, you know, I don't trust any of those services that you're on. So therefore, how can I trust you? So it's that kind of thing. But and then someone else might have a load of things that 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 that, that they, that, that, yeah, yeah. So before we get into uh, Kendra and mm. what you're designing and developing there, yeah. in mm. terms of and and so fantastic that you're being funded and that this can be utilized in other instances. Yeah. Um, in terms of, so let's take a real world example of a deep democracy challenge here where, where I'm living in what's known as British Columbia. We have a pipeline that is being pushed through by Kinder Morgan. The federal government's in support of it. 
It does not have social license. It does not have uh, the agreement with uh, the indigenous folks whose territory it goes through. Mm -hmm. um, and yet the building materials are being dropped off as we speak throughout the territory and uh, construction starts in the fall, like in a month. Right. Uh, so we've got, we've got uh, strong communities of, uh, of resistance uh, yeah. and it's happening now like these and you know there there is um there's a lot of different organizations that are standing against and and local governments uh, the yeah. city of vancouver here burnaby mm. all of these mayors stand against it um and but the the process has been has been uh, not something that's trustable uh, in terms of the national energy board and how they ran their process and and uh, essentially the the will of the people was overruled by uh, by the federal government uh, saying we need to get this oil to market this is the dirtiest oil on the planet um, it's based on on again uh, you know, contravening indigenous rights that are in the constitution. So there's all of these, there's all of these deep challenges and it's happening now. There are a lot of different groups that are working on that. A lot of different petitions that are out there, for example. So how would this, how would this series of services, like what does that look like in terms of the 18 or 25 different groups that are on the ground working towards this? How can yeah. what we're proposing to build serve uh, that? Okay. So, it's, it's interesting, actually, because just want to say one thing before I dive into the answering that is that the Internet serves everyone. You know, it doesn't it doesn't have a um, it doesn't choose who can and can't use it. it, it it's just a language. And, and, and I really like that. I like it when when technologists get out of the way and just let people self-organize. So, you know, whatever remit they have, um, it's important for me that there's freedom. And, and I, I, I have- What do you mean by remit? Uh, did I say, what did whatever I say? Whatever remit they have. What do you mean by remit? Yeah, yeah, I so say whatever, if they wanna uh, love the world, destroy the world, what, you know, that whole, the whole, the whole spectrum, you know, it's, it's not for me to say what is and what isn't possible. So um, I just want to create technology that allows people to express and, uh, and be able to be more active and be able to um, uh, yeah, achieve they, what they want to achieve in their lives. And, but that doesn't legislate it being any particular way. And, and, and I think that's, that's, that's also, I think, you know, has been a problem when, so it's, for example, I've seen Tim Berners-Lee, the guy who invented the World Wide Web, um, with others for sure, but, you know, he was, he's the kind of like the, the figurehead. Um, he's asked about that, you know, all the bad things that go on on the internet. And I think um, it, yeah, I just want to say that it's, it's it, I want to produce technology that is um, agnostic. You know, so so it facilitates people reaching their desires, whatever that might be, and um, and and I can sleep easy with that. <laughs> so so to your point there, um, in terms of democracy, because that's what we're really what we're talking about. The world I want to see is when people get it along and people are able to express their points of view and. Um, we and things are transparent you know processes are transparent and um yeah this is this is the thing i have deep faith that when everything is transparent and when uh we are all able to participate in the processes that that, uh, that are deeply affecting us that good things will happen uh that, that is blind faith i'm sorry that's just blind faith that that good good stuff will happen when 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 things are open and um, you can, you know, I've had lots of discussions and arguments with that premise, but that's what everything I do is based on, um, that I think people are inherently good. 
you know, so, so it's that, that's another contentious point of view that lots of people will argue with. Um, people are good people. That's, that's, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. from Andrew yeah. Radzik. He, right. Yeah. Right. So, so with that in mind, um, yeah, that's why I don't legislate. I don't want to get into legislating and some people do, you know, some, people who create technology legislate what it can be used for. I don't want to do, get into that because I think ultimately that freedom creates, if we, you know, people have to go through their life story and do what they do. And, 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 but the more, the more reflection, the more mirroring, the more open, the more obvious, the more transparent everything is just, just the, the, I think it will just, tend towards harmonization and peace. So with regards to the processes that you've been talking about, I think um, the kind of technology we, that we want to build is just about bringing, um, uh, making it easier to self-organize. Yeah. Um, and that's what the internet has done for us, you know? So the, the military created the internet and then it enabled people to self-organize better. Thank you, military. Thank you, great stuff. So, um, and, you know, did, did the military have that in mind when they built it? Don't know. Um, uh, but I think, you know, open protocols have given us the ability to self-organize. And that's, that's what I want to continue that um, building of open protocols. So um, in a sense, like I was talking about this stack that, 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 what we're doing is we're moving further and further up the stack in terms of a harmonization process. A harmonization might, might, might get on people's, um, might be the wrong term for some people. It might sound a bit too fluffy or nice, but what it's about, that, that's what a protocol does. Is it, it, it harmonizes lots of disparate, different methodologies and creates a general methodology, a language that, that, is, that is commonly understood. Yes. And therefore it brings harmony between services. Sorry, that's just, that's just what happens. So um, with regards to um, democracy, hey, you know, in terms of the specifics, uh, you, uh, possibly I might have to sh shut up, but I, I tend to be a bit flippant sometimes, you know, in that, um, uh, you know, at the moment we're, we're in, we're in uh, a, p a place where m might, might wins out a lot of the times. And, um, you know, it, it's uh, just something we, we, we have to um, be really patient with um, and really loving with, you know, I think, I think this is a real case for just continually loving because to, to start fighting is, is not, is not going to help us. So uh, with regards to that, yeah, build technology that creates open openness that allows people to share their ideas, um, self-organize more efficiently. This is also, also all about efficiency in terms of costs and human efficiency as well, and make it easier to, um, my rambling. Well, I'm just I'm just sort of going back to the kind of real world example of go for it. So ask a specific question. Yeah, in the environmental community here, there's there's tons of people that are leaning into this specific campaign around Kinder Morgan, um, which it crosses it crosses the headwaters of the Fraser. So everything downwind or downstream uh, would be affected. Uh, so it affects. It affects every river, yeah. you know, all the river systems. So, 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 so not, and I'm not pushing you to uh, like this. No, I let me, let me tell you some, you know, things where some, you know, a lot of the issues around this are um, what the media is putting out. So the media is, is kind of influential. So if the media can't see how many people really think this is a bad thing or a good thing or whatever, then they can't really represent it. And um, so if the media can get better access to stats about what people are thinking and who's involved and what people are saying, then they can um, better represent, you know, what's actually happening. Because at the moment, um, it might be that they're getting a skewed, you know, the, the journalists are getting a skewed idea of what's actually happening. So these are also tools to allow journalists to um, uh, get better 
more accurate information about who's actually thinking what, you know. So by, this, might, yeah. this might look like perpetual polling around issues that are that are uh, that can be individually uh, um, that I I for example could pose a question that could go to these different democracy services and people could participate in that question so that that so that we could all know okay really where do all of the human beings stand yeah that kind of thing but because because at the you know Time and time again, I've come across technologists who say, uh, you know what, all of these other guys, they're just not building it properly. And I'm going to build the thing that is actually the one and it's really going to work really well. And it's a great idea and it works really, you know, in, in theory, it works really well. And even if they build it, it's actually really amazing and amazing. But the problem is they've got 50 other competitors. Even if it's in a democracy space, they're still a competitor. Even if it's nonprofit, they're still, everyone's eating each other's client base. So, so what I'm interested in is working in that, you know, I have my favorite interface, you know, I really like Avaz and, you know, and change.org and, uh, you know, I don't like some other ones, you know, so, so, so I'll use those instead of other ones, you know, or I'll use Facebook instead, you know, and, and to just to vent my opinion. So there, therefore it's incumbent on who, who is actually trying to find out what are, what are people really feeling to poll all of those services. And, and then obviously what we need to do is we need to stop people, you know, we need, we need to capture, well, this person has voted on two different services. So we need to, you know, make sure that they're only counted once. And, you know, another thing that we need to do is, you know, that generally on all these different services, there will be very similar requests for comments. You know, there'll be very similar questions being posed or polls being made. And, um, so we will again use the crowd to identify what are the similar things that are being talked about and then identify and then by stringing those together we we will actually say ah what's the and then what are the results of all of those different um polls and questions so what when you said i'm gonna i need to send out a question to all of these different places. That could be something you want to do and that could be facilitated, but it might actually be that those things already exist. And it's a question of, well, and then we can get a crowd function to actually find all of them. So what we, what we can do is we can all start working much more efficiently on, um, on sort of like getting, you know, pushing, putting stuff out there and bringing stuff back. Because in a perfect world, there would only be one computer one server and one system and we'd all be working on that but it's not like that we have thousands of different different places to put our opinion thousands of different social networks where we interact thousands, thousands of different messaging systems you know and in order and you could say well there should only be one well it just doesn't it's just not realistic there's not going to be one everyone's pushing their own stuff everyone has their own deals going on commercial non-commercial whatever we have to work within that frame and go where the people are, go with what the people are using now. Yeah. Yeah. That's one place where you and I really agree. I like to use yeah. the tools that are being used because. Absolutely. We'd have to be really pragmatic here. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, so in terms of, there's also just to point out uh, if you have two or three different questions, it's an opportunity to kind of a B test what the language of the questions are because you're going to get, and, and that's mm. one, th those are certain ways to kind of trick the system in a sense is because you can change a word, it changes the meaning in people's minds yeah. and yeah. People, people read what yeah. people take in from a question yeah. is yeah. maybe not necessarily what was even being asked. Yeah, uh, sure. So the language is really important. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So, in t so you're me and you're going to a dinner uh, with Rick and Patel mm. Thursday night. Yeah. Uh, you're luckily you get seated right beside him. You say. Awesome. Yeah. No, I definitely would sit right beside him. <laughs> Just get in there. Um, yeah, this is an interesting one. Okay. So how are you doing, Rick? Um, I'll be Rick. Um, yeah. I've been following, following your work a lot. I'll have to 
have a look at the website. <laughs> um, have to gen up on who he is. Um, yeah, I think I'd, I'd start asking him about what he feels, where he thinks things are going. That that would be of real interest to me. What 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 where where does where is all this going? What does he want? You know, what does he want this to? What does he want? Really want out of this? And if if he doesn't say. I just want a big house and a family. Then he's probably going to say, "I want to, I want to bring about world peace or something like that." I'm sure. I'm sure. You know, I'd be surprised if he didn't somehow want to bring harmony. And then I kind of like grill him a bit more about like how how does he really think that's going to happen? <laughs> and that's when I'd say, "Well, you know, I've been thinking about this too." <laughs> and here's my take. And and obviously you're going to be you sitting next to him. But that, that's kind of, yeah. That, and so, yeah, you've got, you, 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 could, you could talk about the API stuff and say, and say you know, we want to bring harmony as well. And because I'm sure he's going to say harmony. He's got to say harmony. <laughs> It'd be funny if he gets to see this before, before the dinner. Anyway, um, and... All right. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna so jump, yeah, go for it. I'm going to jump in and just say what I might say. And this is real rough because I'm still yeah. working to be able to explain all of this because there's so much machine yeah. language in it that yeah. it's hard to make it really relatable, which, and I really value having this conversation with you just to help mm. build, to build my language around this. Uh, so, um, yes, definitely start with thank you for his work because really yeah. uh you know all the mm. democracy organizations have really helped to build the feeling and the capacity of movements and yeah right exactly oh, right. It's, it's yeah tools it's uh mm. so um i'm working with a with a small group of folks who are putting mm. a a proposal into the global challenges foundation mm. mm -hmm. did you know about the global challenges foundation i'll probably ask him he may have he may yeah. have a, a proposal in as well because yeah. it just makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Uh, and that what we were what we were wanting to do is is have a collaborative proposal to mm. do two things. One is to connect democracy services using application protocol interfaces interfaces because it's protocol interfaces. That's what it's that's it's not programmable. Anyway, uh, and so that. No. Yeah, no, look, look, look it up. Yeah, I thought I saw protocol interfaces when I looked it up. But uh, yeah, it's, it's both, um, regardless of the language, it's functionally both. Uh, yeah, it actually, you, you need to be a little bit careful there, but it, it just, if you're going to use the API at all, I would just use API because he should know what that is. If he asks what it is, then just make sure you've got the right wording because it, it's... I don't want to Otherwise, sound like an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. But but you know what? You could just avoid all of that altogether and just go with um what it means to you. And so this is like an application. Well, that's where I was going. Yeah. Yeah. Let me, sorry. Let me just run through it. Go, uh, go for it. I'll shut up. Yeah. Uh, so so essentially, some of the things that we see is that people need to have opportunities to work together, to aggregate data, to be able to mm. uh, connect these movements of change. Uh, because as mm. you know, there's Avaz, there's, uh, there's also change.org, there's 350.org, Lead Now, mm. all of these smaller organizations mm. that are also doing, uh, doing uh, you know, asking questions of their people and getting opinions. Mm. And what mm. we're really looking to do is to create a robust way for people to be able to aggregate that information and connect as a movement. Uh, mm -hmm. So in terms of what that might look like for Avaz is if you're asking a similar question to change mm. at, or 350 or any of these mm. other organizations, mm. that we would be able to pull data from all of those organizations yeah. around specific questions yeah. for an issue yeah. and be yeah. able to, to, to present that to yeah. any viewer, including the media, yeah. which is going to make things a lot yeah. easier for them as well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. to be able to, to graph people's opinions and, and really demonstrate what democracy should look like. Yeah. 
I, th I think, I think um, there's a few caveats there. Great. Uh, it sounded wonderful what it should look like, but just if you're talking to him, it might be just politics. It will look like. No, no, the other way. It's just like, this is our idea. Like, like play it down a little bit because, you know, he's, he's obviously done some good shit to get where he is. And just, just um, I, I would be cautious about too early getting on a soapbox. Okay. So just, just, just that bit. So um, broadening and leveraging our work as a movement. What we're aiming at. Yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, leverage. yeah, yeah. Okay. Keep, it, keep it soft rather than hard. So it's not, not like this is how it should be. It's more like, you know, we... So, yeah, the more like is basically looking at... Um, you're getting some air. Uh, actually, it was just loud outside, so I was closing. Okay, it's loud outside. Yeah, right. Um, so, so it's important to say somewhere in there, we're not a service. We are not a service. It's a an application that a user would use to access multiple services. So we're not taking away his clients. We're not taking away his people. They're still using his system. That this is really important for all, you know, everything that I'm doing. I'm not setting up a, another service that is that is going to try and amass a load of clients. I'm not interested in, in having clients. I'm not interested in having people that I can call clients. I want people to be able to do things more efficiently that with the services that they have. That's all really. Yeah. So um, the um, so it's, it's kind of perhaps important to stress. Well, you know, you don't want to say anything too stressy because I, I, it just creates stress, right? So there's something around, um, say, yeah, just, just, just when you're talking around an application, that it's, that it's an application that's going to make it easier to get into and out of a VAS whilst doing it with multiple other systems so the important fact here is you know if i was going to just use a vas then it's probably easier just to go to a vas the website or the application if they've got one there and use that but if i want to do if i want to tra tra traverse across multiple services and websites then um it's uh it's amazing how a beep can throw you. <laughs> I'm so sorry, that's Aaron, and he's like, would have loved to hop on. We could invite him. No, uh, not at this point. Let's just carry on, and because I think we're on a roll, and I want to have it. This is a really good video. I want to have a succinct video here, and uh, let's stop this, and then maybe add him later. Okay, yeah, great. Okay. Uh, so I'm just going to close Facebook so that that does not happen. Sure. Um, so, so yes. And I mean, the, the challenge for me is how to get specific enough so that they can see, they can imagine in their mind how they can apply it to their work, uh, and yeah. loose enough so that they can have the room to be able to, to dream into that. Yeah. Yeah. I think it really is about keying into his vision. So where does he really want this to go? How does he see this really scaling? Is a VAS going to be the one? He can't think that. No one can think that their own service is going to be the one. So, and, but have you thought beyond you know, what you're doing? Because some people won't have. They just go, some people might be really cynical and just go, you know, I'm really trying to do this. I don't think it's going to work ultimately, and I don't know what is. And, you know, well, just like well, we've been thinking about that. We've been thinking about how can we actually get every, all this momentum that we've got and bring it together and, and, and give and still, you know, we don't want to take anything away from. Uh, actually, I, I don't even want to put that idea in there. We want to just add to yes. what is currently happening by making it easier for people to get in and get out again and get their stuff out and get opinions out and make it much easier for journalists to to just to really see what's going on mm -hmm. across the board visualization tools because they don't have those at the moment and therefore they don't get and politicians what are my people thinking and the king what are my people thinking well here's use this app and you'll be able to find out sir you know yes. <laughs> uh okay
okay. So, I mean, and, and then there's the pieces that I'm bringing in around collaborative conversations and really sure. getting into the granularity Absolutely. of what it means to collaborate. Yeah. Because the reason why I brought in yeah. the conversation around Kinder Morgan is because that's really specific. There's tons of people on the ground who are doing that stuff. They're not necessarily yeah. harmonized. You know, and what organizations do at this point is that they're like, okay, David Suzuki is doing that piece. Great. The Wilderness Committee is doing that piece. Awesome. You know, so there is yeah. a level of collaboration, yeah. but there is toe stepping and there are relationships that get damaged because people are seeing that competition yeah, 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 in yeah. the space. So what we're looking to do. Ah, it's crazy, isn't it? Yes. What we're looking to do in part is to be able to leverage the work that we're doing as a movement in terms of aggregating our our data and our information and being able and democracy services. Hold on. And we're yeah. also we're also looking to uh, to specifically integrate that in communities through conversations and through uh, through mm. uh, transparent conversations that can kind of show the real people mm. behind it, um, mm. as well as draw interest, information, and best practices towards how mm. we actually collaborate. Did Did you say hold on to me? Yes. I could feel oh. you. I could the, feel you jumping. No, look, look, I, look, I breathe. I breathe sometimes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's awesome. Um, the the the, um, the 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 thing that we can really come from that is actually about stating what is actually going on that we're all competing with each other and we're stepping on each other's toes. I think that's awesome, and and, and that you know that that these conversations can be real, sort of like. Um, What's it? <laughs> oh, I can't remember what they're called, but like, like, not it's not arbitration, but you know, like coming together of bruised people, and and say, yeah, look, this is happening, and we've got to we've got to work better than this. Yes, you know, we've got to work yes. more efficiently, more harmonized than this. How do we actually do it? Because because yeah. otherwise, we're just sticking in our narrow focus. You know, our our, our you know our super active. You know action you know we're doing our thing and and i you know i've seen this in other other areas actually yeah uh where where, where different groups who all want the same thing are all like really really being can get no, a lot of infighting and yeah we've got to really call, we've got to call people on that no you can't do this anymore actually we've got to actually really be tough with them and say stop it <laughs> well, <laughs> you know because One thing is with the transparent conversations is actually you can see yourself when you're in transit, yeah, right. when you can't, yeah. when, when yeah. you're drawing a hard line in the sand and that yeah. is something yeah. that's transparent yeah. and you're accountable to. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think that it has mm. the capacity mm. to change people's behavior, to show up as their yeah. best people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sure. Uh, sure. So, sure. and also show that it's not easy. Mm. Mm. Uh, and we can find the pathway through. Sure. Awesome. Yeah. We, we do have common all goals and aims. Mm. Yeah. 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 So it's about, it's about being able to see that. That's one really, that's a big aspect of what I want to facilitate is letting people see that there is more commonality amongst their people than, than they may think. And then finding those people, you know, and, and the, the, yeah, the problem is, is that, the methodologies for, methodologies for describing those desires and then for searching and, and, and finding those desires <clears throat> amongst others is, is, not, is not necessarily fluid and, and transparent, you know, it's not easy. So we kind of need ways of marking up, you know, like, um, you know, HTML, hypertext markup language. So we need something like a desire markup language, you know, so where, where machines can help us find, both, both express our desires and find people who have similar desires, yeah. Just like a massive dating network for concepts and ideas. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, there's, I, I just see there's so much capacity for leveraging the change that's happening right now because we are speaking different sure. languages, sure. whether it is yeah, exactly. machine yeah. language or yeah. human language. Mm. So part of why this sure. conversation was so important to me today is because you and I do speak a different language. I get it mostly, yeah. Um, yeah. but I can't mm. 
quite, I haven't been able to quite translate it. So today's sessions yeah. really help yeah. me to be able to, I think, articulate what cool. you're up to in my own language. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Uh, um, by the way, I think this has been an awesome conversation and I'd like to make it public somehow. So maybe we should talk about that when we finished it. And, and so, yeah, I think, I think I'd like to put this out there. Absolutely. Yeah. So just to polish up so that people can have a really clear yeah. understanding of what it is that you're creating over the next three years, starting next month yeah. uh, in, in terms of, yeah, because if we can see, if, if we can share what it is that you're doing that can be repurposed within the democracy space and other spaces, mm. Uh, mm. it'll make a lot more sure. sense. So Kendra, go. Sure. Yeah, well, what we want to create and what we will be creating is a, an application framework that will be basically be a pluggable framework that will be able to operate as a mobile app or a desktop app or in the cloud as a web website. Um, and it will facilitate, it'll be basically, basically be a dashboard for in, in, in the music case, it's a dashboard for an artist or a manager or a record label to manage their metadata, their, their information around songs. So be it copyright, be it ownership, be it credits, be it who played on what, um, uh, be it where did, where did this sample come from? Can I clear this sample? You know, all of these um, uh, transactions that need to take place, which usually happen by email or phone we want to really make more efficient um and so if i've got like a thousand i could say a hundred samples in a song i want to have one button that i that, that, that i can click that says go clear these samples which is just like way out there technology in terms of what's currently happening right now um, and that is going to be facilitated by having a subsystem which is um back-ended by uh basically a pluggable API system. So, uh, so we can plug into multiple services that already exist, that already do certain things in the music space. So for example, iTunes, SoundCloud, Bandcamp, uh, just kind of like where you would put your music, where you try and sell your music. And then you've got like um, ASCAP and P PRS and PPL, uh, and and gamer that that, that manage um, artists' rights in different countries. So in each country, you've got like ten different organizations that manage rights for video artists, um, uh, music artists, um, uh, and um, photos. and composers as well. We've got and photos as well. Yeah, photo libraries and photo. Um, uh, so there's 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 loads of different places where this information resides and where transactions are happening. And we want to make it much easier for people that are managing that, be it an individual, be it a company, um, to, to facilitate that. And so there's, there's actually, very interestingly, Kendra's been going since the, the end of the 90s. Uh, and um, it's really only in the last couple of years really that a lot of people have actually understood what we've been trying to do and they they've seen it in the blockchain and and that's great the blockchain has come along it's a great marketing platform for these kind of concepts and and it and it will be useful as an immutable data store for sure and as a, as a, as a way of moving forward but we still need all the all the functionality and all of the technology behind it. And we don't, we, we, we can't just leave what's currently working. We've got to transform and transfer into a new era. And who knows, it may include a lot of what's currently working as well. And, and it may, be, again, it comes back to this hybrid model that I was talking about. Centralization, decentralization. I think people have got to have the, um, uh, you know, we've got to give people with the technology that we create, we've got to give people the choice to use what they want to use. So that's, again, what I'm interested in is, is connecting in with all of the old incumbents, all of the old dinosaurs, all of the old companies and organizations that have been going for hundreds of years, 
protecting people's copyright and also then bolting on new era stuff like blockchain and stuff that's coming after the blockchain and arts work as well. Um, plugging that in and letting people play with different ways of managing their data to putting it onto different systems and, and really seeing how, um, what's going to be more efficient and effective for them because mm -hmm. everyone will have a different use case. And, and yeah, there's a base system and then there's the music kind of like layer on top of that that's specific to music. But yeah, the base system is basically an application that is, has a bunch of API clients plugging into it and we can move that from into different sectors. And that's what's really interesting here. Yeah. So as an example, I'm a musical artist. I've got a mm -hmm. band. There's five of us. We have an yeah. album. Uh, yeah. In your system, what we could do to manage our copyright and uh, payments per play through the different services that we have presenting that music uh, is that, uh, for example, per click, if four cents is, is generated or something, that the five of us have agreed that we each get 20%. Um, that 20% is dispersed per click through the, uh, through the copyright organizations because we're plugged into them, but it's user-centric in terms of I'm, I have my own client with okay. my own identity that I'm, am I off base? No, you're, you're kind of there because that's what just one use case, but I just want to explain that excuse me, that um, someone who's already making music and is doing very well out of it um, will have maybe a manager that needs to interact with all of these, these, these places where, you know, where, where they're selling the music and so forth. And um, they may have direct connections or they may go through a digital aggregator, music aggregator. And um, so what we want to do is, if they're, if they're not using a digital aggregator, then they can use an application that, that allows that facility of interacting with what they're currently doing. So yeah. in, in terms of this kind of new, new stuff, which is what you were talking about in a sense about like, you know, actually having those contracts in a sense, smart contracts actually visible between the band. It's like, you know, 20% each. And um, those can be modeled by a service because there are services doing those or, or they'll be modeled in the app and it will be up to the user or users, which if they use a service to do that or whether they use the app to do that, to do that. And again, I'm, I'm always going to stress because what we're doing is we're going out to service providers is that we're not taking your clients because we're not a service provider. The app is a standalone app that users will use in order to more efficiently connect to you and do what they do with you, you know, and I just, just what's interesting though, just we, we have a few configuration screens within the app and um, it's uh, one of them is basically going to list all of the current service providers that, that are, that we have a plugin for and anyone who has an API will plug them in. Uh, we'll build an API client for them and we'll, we'll plug them in. So uh, what we'll be able to do is list say for example, Bandcamp and iTunes, and you want to sign up to Bandcamp, boom, press a button. You won't need to go to the website and do that because we'll have your credentials. Sorry, the app will have your credentials. I say we as in I'm the app, you know. Uh, we're, the app will have your credentials, you'll press a button, and the app will send your credentials to Bandcamp. We'll, we'll know the API call, we'll know the API function for register user, yeah, so we'll be able to slot your information in there. We'll get back a, a, a thing from Bankup saying, hey, you're registered. The user won't need to go to the website and fill all that in. But then they'll be logged into Bandcamp and we'll be able to say, push my songs to Bandcamp. Bam. And you're kind of like there. That's what we want to facilitate. And you'll be able to do that again and again and again with multiple different service providers. What's interesting now is if a service provider is just starting out and they get a, a plugin on this um, application, we're, we're calling it Kendra Hub actually. In fact, I'm, I might have changed Kendra to Kendra IO, so it might be called Kendra IO Hub now. Who knows what will actually happen in the end. But um, it, it makes it a lot easier if the, a new service provider comes along, builds, builds a plugin, helps us build a plugin for their system, 
so we can connect into their API. Um, to, and, and then they get access to all of the people using the application as well. And so, and, and again, it's just, everyone's gonna have a different use case. Everyone's gonna have their favorite service providers where they sell their stuff. But what this actually does now is it creates a much freer marketplace. Hey, we live in a capitalist, capitalist world with a free marketplace, wonderful, where users can make a choice about who, who they go with, you can make a choice about who you buy stuff from, who you go with, uh, who you go with as a service provider to host your and sell your 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 stuff. So, so I guess that that's part. It goes back to the freedom aspect for me as well. That it makes it a lot easier for um, artists to try out new services, um, see if they're good or if they're shit, and then move on or stick with them. You know, and comment on them and pass those comments on to other people. And you know, rate. You know, it's it's. All of these things, all of these services already exist in terms of rating and stuff like that, but we're just going to make it much easier because you're bringing it back to the, to the user. It's user-centric computing, right? Rather than, rather than business-centric computing, right? It, it's, it's a dashboard for the user. That, you know, I want to see it all here. I don't want to have to go out there. That's, that's, that's the proposition. Yes. But basically the same functionality, but made it made more efficient. Awesome. Well, I'm excited. Cool. It's, uh, it's a lot to take right. in, but, Me too. I, but, uh, this, it feels like it has the right balance of serving, uh, an important need and creating yeah. tools for us to connect as movements and as sectors both. So yes. Um, and we will progress. Thank you so much for going deep with this. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing how this all builds out. Me too. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Dan.